Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini Aji Shafe. We need to look at uh, some activities in the world of sports. Starting from home scene, that has to do with Aaron Akwadui recently. He traveled to South Africa to compete at the WTT contender over there in Durban, but he couldn't just make it. He got actually crashed out in the quarterfinal. But right now, he's going to be competing over there in Doha. Aruna tackles Portuguese Marcos Freitas in first round at WT contender in Doha 2023. That'll be starting fully on Thursday and hopefully world number 14, African number one can at least uh, pick this particular one. It is very possible that he will move ahead, but he will be facing a tough task against Portuguese Marcos Freitas. I have in the studio, Chide Olushola. Good to have you. Yeah, good to be here. Good one. We look at that story, WTT uh, contender. That's uh, in Doha 2023. The one for South Africa, he lost at the quarter finals, but Nigerians are hoping that he'll be able to pick up the pieces and do well in Doha. Or well, maybe AJ started on him now. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because now in South Africa, of course, uh, he crashed out. In the, I think he started, he started very well, mm. but along the line, uh, he failed, so he left. And now he has gone to do it again to, you know, to see how he can... To try his best. Yeah, to try his best. Yeah, he remains, a, he remains a number one in the, uh, Africa and number 14 in the world. But then, uh, out of his prowess, he's getting, he's getting diminished by the day because this guy has been on the stage for several years now. Mm. He's almost synonymous to attend tennis in Nigeria. Uh, it's, like I said, there's no other person that can replace him at the moment, but of course, we have younger players. A lot of players, yeah. a lot but of players. He's, 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 he's the most famous, he's, he's most known in Africa as the best. Uh, but then his best is not, is no longer good enough for the for the, uh, for the world, uh, other players from, the, from other countries. So I think uh, maybe maybe when he starts his game against the Portuguese uh, uh, in Doha, so we will see what he can be able to spring up. But then, if I think if he does not do very well, I mm. think you, you start you know, thinking of you know, dropping the bats. Well, well from then, the way it is, uh, for, I remember it was 10, from 10 to 11, 12, 14 now. But hopefully, uh, if you can at least uh, get to win against, because I know how good Marcos Freita is. Yes, Fantastic yes. table tennis player for Portugal, but it's a big one. After all, number one in Africa shouldn't just drop the button. He should also fight hard. I, I remember the likes of Atonda Musa, Bosse Kafo. Funke Oshonaike, all doing well for Nigeria when it comes to this sport. Right now is the turn of Aruna Kodri, but it's time that we begin to see how we can also upgrade some players uh, that could take over. Uh, although we know we have some, but really they need to be in that mode of Aruna Kodri. Yeah, of course. That, that's why I said that because I think it's the, the stage is almost getting you know, uh, out for him and uh, it's high time for him. He just gradually leaves. Uh, but he, before he leaves, he should, he should have people that will succeed him at that stage, people that you will have groomed. Of course, I'm, I believe you'll be grooming some players, and I, and I believe some people are learning under, under him as well, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if his best, is Africa best, but if his best is no longer good enough for us, when it, when it, when it comes to uh, on the world stage, I think, uh, so he has this last chance now in Doha now to prove his men to the game. But I feel if he's not going to do very well, if he, do, if he does very well, probably yes, maybe he, he, he had an off season in South Africa. But if what happens in South Africa happens again in a Doha, uh, you should just drop the bat. And, no. yeah. Just like that? Uh, just no. Drop the bat. How do you? How do you? <laughs> uh, because <laughs> this, yeah, so, it, yeah, wait, it, wait a minute. Just because <laughs> if, just in, we are not praying for his failure, but what we are saying right now that if he doesn't perform in Doha, he should just gradually be looking for to add to drop. No, you drop. say he should just drop the bat. Not, not, not uh, like that, but gradually, you know, and leave the stage. <laughs> should be, uh, because maybe he should be a soldier. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, if not, you, you have been on the stage for too long. Mm. You, you have been there for but, years. But there's no one that has been able to uh, beat him in Africa. When you look at the record he has but set. If you're, if you're, if mm. you're best, you're not good on the world stage. Mm. But you don't use just one game to uh, that's what I said. If, if, that's why I say if, if he brings that performance from mm. South Africa and takes it to Doha, then you should be, you should be thinking of living in Now, let stage. me take you back. Uh, let, let me, it let, could be an off-season for him Let's go quick Africa. football. I know how many times Argentina actually been pursuing the World Cup. Yeah. And I know how many times Lionel Messi, alongside the Albi Celeste, fought hard to get to even the final they lost before they got this final one that they got. But really, they never gave up. So for Aruna Quadri... And if the first Messi gave up? All of them. No, I'm, what I'm saying is that even though they, at a point they gave up, they actually bounced back. Yeah. Now, Aruna Quadri, for the fact that he failed at the quarterfinals in South Africa, doesn't mean he's out. We should just also believe in him that he can actually do well in Doha in so many... This is just the beginning of the year. So, so many games that will be coming up. No, I agree with you. Now, I'm not saying... Look, I, I want you to get me right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm saying that if he carries that same form uh, into the, the poor form he had in uh, South Africa and takes it to, to Doha, then there's something wrong somewhere. 
that's why I say probably he should be thinking of just gradually leaving because age will surely tell on him. In fact, he's telling on him. Mm. Yeah, he has been there for many years now, over 20 years now. You know, more than 20 years. But I'm not, it's not by even by the. He has tried, he has stayed there, he had that longevity, which is good for him. And of course, nobody has been able to beat him on the African stage. But if the African best is no longer performing at the worst stage, then it's a problem. Mm. So if, if the younger ones are given the opportunity to rival him and learn the process, and of course, gather that, that experience that he has gathered, the better for us. But, but we, can't, we can't keep on relying on over a man who's, who's getting close to 40 mm. to, be, to still be our, our main champion. Of course, I understand what you are saying. So it's, if, if, we, if we leave the state gradually, then the younger ones can be able to... just ease out. Slowly. Good one. Well, so, from there, let's... Uh, <laughs> Aruna Kodri, Aruna Kodri, well, from the way it is, uh, it just needs to continue to at least uh, do it. Let's see what we do over there in Doha, the WW, uh, WTT, that's World Table Tennis Contenders, let's say for Doha, Qatar, 2023, starting on Thursday. We wish them all the best as he will be fighting hard there. Now, we're talking about the FA Cup third round uh, replay result, uh, rather fixture that will be coming up between Leeds United versus uh, uh, Cardiff City. That particular match will be coming up. And uh, who, do you, who are you supporting here, GD? No. Mm. And well, one must win. <laughs> Anybody that wins. <laughs> <Is> it, <laughs> one person, either you like it or not, one of them must be out tonight. I'm not supporting any of them. Anybody mm -hmm. that wins, good for them. But I think I, I might just, I might just uh, you know, you know uh, tilt towards uh, Leeds City. But I have no, I have no preference. Leeds United. Yes, yeah, so yeah, Leeds United. Mm -hmm. I have no preference for any of them. Anybody that wins good, but I'll just say just go for Leeds City. Because Why I, are you going because for Because you Leeds? asked me. Uh, because <laughs> I, 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 I've watched that, I think one or two games of Leeds City this season, and um, I like the way their movement, their, in the, their movements and all that. Though I've, not, I've not seen Cardiff City, but I love the way uh, the Leeds City have been moving you know, when they go up Leeds front. United. So, <laughs> Leeds United. When they, when, they, when they go up front, you know, they, they go like uh, bees, they attack in, in numbers and of course they defend in numbers, which is good. And they're very, very mobile, you know. So I think I'll just go with them because they're asking. But personally, I have no, I have no, I have no, anyone that wins good. A preference is not standing yeah. there. Yeah. Well, whoever wins between Leeds United versus Cardiff City in the replay of the FA Cup third round they'll be having tonight. A big one there anyway for those two clubs. And now we're talking about the EPL. It's going to be a fight between Crystal Palace versus Manchester United. Who wins this battle at the Sellers Park? Is it possible that Man United will also go on winning streak by defeating Crystal Palace or the Eagles, as they call them, will fly over the Reds? Now the Reds are brimming with so much confidence, with so much, uh, you know, that they're able to get at least nine wins straight now. They, you know, so it's, they'll, be, they'll go into this game with so much confidence. Mm. Uh, over uh, Crystal Palace, but for Crystal Palace, led by one African brother, uh, of course, we, we, uh, the coach, I'm talking about the French coach, uh, Vieira. Course, Vieira, of course, is African brother too. Mm. But then uh, he might want to prove, you know, he has, he has this rivalry against uh, with uh, Manchester United when I was an Arsenal uh, player, so he might want to see Ike able to probably stop that winning streak and uh, see how Arsenal can still go away further because if he, give, if, 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 if he wins against Man City, um, uh, against uh, Man U, of course, the gap between Arsenal and Man U will increase further. Mm. So I want to help Arsenal be able to, able to go further. Uh, but then it's, uh, I, I'm happy with the way Eric Targa is able to, Ten Aga is able to uh, revive the fortunes of the club uh, since this year began and you know, since after the World Cup and all that. And, uh, I look forward to see how he's going to play against uh, uh, Crystal Palace because now the players are bringing so much confidence. Now they have so much confidence in themselves. Uh, but though they're not yet out, out, out of the woods, uh, but they should not be about, about too confident because anything can happen. But uh, good one for them. Uh, I think they're doing well right now. So they're smiling right now. So uh, automatically you are, you are turning towards yeah, them I'm winning? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, towards the Man uh, Manchester United, of course. Uh, they're the Red Devils, so they might want to clip the, the, the wings of the, the Crystal Palace. But then the Crystal Palace might want to also want to show that you know, we are not, we are not a, uh, a pushover. We want to destroy your, your title ambition. Because all of a sudden, Man United now they're not title contenders, which is, which is shocking. But it's, it's, it's good news. At the beginning of the season, they were not even in, in the picture at all. But now, mm -hmm. they are. It's something that is interesting to see how that goes out. But I know that VM might want to say, no, it cannot come and destroy Arsenal's their chances. I want Arsenal to win, this, to win the league this season because it's far too long. Well, we wait to see what will be happening there. That's uh, Crystal Palace versus Manchester United. 
and a big one as Zelos Park who wins this battle. Man United are fourth on the table. I have Crystal Palace standing 12th, and right now is the battle between 4 and 12. Facing themselves at the Zelos Park, Vieira versus Everything Hack, Rashford to the rescue. Will he be doing it again tonight? We wait to see what will be happening between those uh, two uh, teams that will be fighting hard in the EPL. Well, let's quickly go to Spanish Copa del Rey as we also give you fixtures uh, coming up in the Copa del Rey. Sporting Guion against, against uh, Valencia. Valencia will be leaving the Astrodome at the Messiah to travel to Sporting Guion to face them in the Copa del Rey. Atletico Bilbao, a host of Spanish. Why Atletico Madrid, the teams that play at the Wanda Metropolitano, uh, well, they will be moving to play against Levante. Can Diego Simeone boys do it? Real Betis at home against Osasuna, battle of La Liga, although it's in Copa del Rey, a big one between Real Betis and Osasuna. Uh, looking at the fixtures, uh, if I speak my win, I'll look at Valencia, of course, defeating uh, Sporting Gion. Mm. Uh, Atletico Bilbao, of course, able to defeat uh, Espanyol. They've not been, they've been very poor. Uh, Atletico Madrid, of course, uh, they should be able to they should have a, a smooth ride over Levante. Mm. But then it's going to be a very tough one between uh, Real Betis and Osasuna. I, I can't pick anyone that will win this game, but uh, any of them can win the game. But now, uh, just looking at what you are saying, that Valencia will beat um, Sporting. They, they should. They should. They should. They should. Beat, but I still remember vividly. Before the game between Cremonese and Napoli was played, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people that's, that's said they should. Napoli. But um, alas, it happened that uh, Sporting Guinea actually picked, uh, sorry, uh, Cremonese picked the day and they were able to win. Even though it's via penalty or you want to call uh, it, uh, but they won. You know, uh, Gattusona is the head coach for mm, uh, Valencia. Valencia and uh, he has able to at, at least try to put some, uh, you know, play some kind of football that's kind of, kind of interesting mm -hmm. as well too. We saw the play against Real Madrid in the Super, Spanish Super Cup, you know, how they had to push Madrid up to the uh, penalty shootout and everything. So we saw that uh, Gattusona is trying to, you know, bring that that spirit of uh, competitiveness into Valencia that I've been missing in a, in a long while. So that's why I say they should be able to have a sports ride over uh, Sporting Guion. Of course, uh, who are a lesser club, who have big names. I mean, big names don't play football these days anyway, but, mm. uh, but looking at the prestige behind uh, the prestige of players in uh, Valencia and the kind of coaching setup now they have under that, so I think they should have a sports ride over Guion. But the the and the Betis, like I said, is I can't be point to win because uh, both sides are on the same pedestal. Mm. They're not playing too well. They're not playing too good. They fumbled this week. They play. They play well. They play well next week. So they can. They both can have an off day, and both can have an on day. So anything can go in for the for the for both teams. Anything can happen between those teams that will be playing Real Betis or Sasuna, or be fighting for honors Atletico Madrid facing Levante. And you have other teams there who also be fighting to see who wins and who stay on in this. Uh, that is Spanish Copa del Rey. We've also earlier talked about Manchester United versus Crystal Palace. And also not forgetting Leeds United taking on uh, Cardiff City in the third round replay of the FA Cup. Now we look at this particular story. West Ham are keen on Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire is a player of Manchester United, but they want him on loan to join them over there. I'm like sure that. all Manchester United fans worldwide will be happy. Will be happy to release <laughs> Harry Maguire on loan. Oh my goodness! <laughs> they said he should go. <laughs> if, 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 if it's on free, go on free. They, will, they, they should sure. borrow some PG from Nigeria. With that, should now. With I'm, that, honestly, I'm sure they'll be willing to have you to go to leave their books because now, uh, yes, in during the World Cup, Harry Maguire played. For England, yeah. Mm. In, in, in all fairness, he played surprisingly. He played very, very well for England. But for Man United, but for Man, I don't know. It's just been awful. Any time, the end time is coming on board. I mean, it's, it's coming to the pitch as, as a substitute. We see, I see the fear uh, in uh, fans that oh, this, this guy's guy is, is open, he's coming open, again. Open up and cause penalty <laughs> or own goal or something. Calamity, Maguire. Yeah. So it's so. so and many fans will be happy to see him leave. Uh, Manchester United, 80 million pounds. I still remember yeah, when they brought him from Leicester City. 80 million pounds, whooping amount of money. When was in Costless Leicester, defender. Yeah, when he was in Leicester, he, he did well. I wonder, I, I don't know whether it was a game plan, but I wonder what uh, Gadilla saw. You know, Gadilla was the first person to have interest in him. Hmm. Maybe, was, maybe they were playing the game, but he had interest in him before. But even, was, even I remember sometimes back, Chelsea was actually uh, uh, mentioned that they were keen on having Harry Maguire. I still wonder what they saw. 
in, in. Maybe that is something we are not seeing. I you don't know. know. And you know, throughout last season, even to the beginning of this season, this season before uh, I returned, I finally dropped him. He was always starting every game, despite the fact that it was it was a calamity at the, at the defense line. But was he, was he starting every game? So wondering what exactly is this boy mm. doing? Ah, you call him a boy? <laughs> of course. What is this man, man doing in this thing? Was, is it there because one uh, godfather, of course, if it was Nigeria, maybe one godfather is behind mm. him or something. This is English football. But this is English football. So mm. I wonder what exactly was he doing at the, at the, at the center now of I will ask you, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're asking this question, so what about Phil Jones? What has been his... Uh, <laughs> okay. Has there been any <laughs> power that Phil Jones... Because if you notice, Phil Jones will be able to survive Ferguson, Mourinho, uh, Ragnik, uh, what is his name now, uh, Socia, uh, even Ten Hag. Well, he, he has been there. And he has not played the match since. So what has been the secret? And so it, if you're talking about Maguire, now I'm only trying to <laughs> open... Uh, you know, that one, he was injured. After injury, he was, mm. he, he was not playing for several... For but several. he has been he's still there. Yeah. As at, the point, at the point, he was, he, was, uh, he was taken to Team B. Go and get your fitness in Team mm. B and everything. But then he's still... I don't know so, why. So it means whatever is working for Phil Jones he's can, has, for. can also work for Maguire. No, no. <laughs> but Manchester United is, fans <laughs> out there, just like you said, they will be happy if uh, truly West Ham can just get this player out of that fold of uh, Manchester United at Old Trafford. Now, she's talking about some transfer story. Now, a player that actually play over there at the World Cup right now is being pursued. His name is Gonzalo uh, Gonzalez, rather. Uh, we're talking about uh, Nicolas Gonzalez. Leicester City have had a 30 million pounds bid. For Argentina, for Nicolas Gonzalez, rejected there by Fiorentina. Fiorentina doesn't want him to go. They want him to stay with them. Or you up the game. £30 million pound is too small uh, for the amount Leicester City are offering. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't blame Fiorentina, of course. Mm -hmm. This is time to cash out on him. Of course. So if they are bringing £30 million pounds on him, they consider that as too low, uh, too small for, for such players. So up the money, maybe like £50 million. Pounds, mm -hmm. And then it's off, it's off the books. Take him. It's business. So you can't, you can't, of course, you, uh, though he's not, he's not very prolific, uh, but then, of course, he's delivering the group. But he has been, at least, uh, one way or the other, the, the, some people actually tag him Aubameyang for the style of play. Yeah. And uh, if you look at Aubameyang one way or the other, in his own right, he's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that uh, very, very extremely uh, uh, prolific, mm -hmm. so to say. But of, of course, it does well for uh, for Etina and of course for Etina. I don't know how many goals he has scored for Etina in his career, but uh, looking at the club, at the club, at his club, for yes. Yeah, he's doing he's doing uh, quite well. So of course, this is time to cash out on, on on this kind of players. You know, I don't know how soon his contract will end, uh, but then thirty million pounds to me is is, is a little bit. Uh, Especially for players who. Just won the World Cup. Exactly. We've seen we've seen that Alvarez. Stock has, that, that stock has his uh, valuation has gone, gone up. Yeah. We've seen Emiliano gone up. We've seen uh, himself Gonzalo. In fact, all Argentina players. Yeah. Right now, that stock has risen mm. very very. So offering thirty million for a World Cup winner. I uh, know it's. it's uh, but I hope it won't be like James Rodriguez. I know, remember, they worked uh, okay. out Colombia. It, it was like a flash in the pan, and no, then Real Madrid actually, went for him. It was actually a flash in the but pan. But that guy is a very good player. Yeah, he, he did very well for Colombia, even when he came for to Madrid. Even Real Madrid. Yeah, he, he played well. But the point, he lost his form. Mm -hmm. and he That's where the word flash in the pan now <laughs> coming. <laughs> but really, Gonzalez, right now, from Fiorentina, they say, we don't want your 30 million pounds. Talking to Leicester there. If you need him, cough out more money for Gonzalez there. Good one. Let's talk about the goalkeeper. His name is Jan Sommer. He actually plays trader. He's from Switzerland. But right now, Borussia Mönchengladbach rejects Bayern Munich offer of 9 million euros for goalkeeper Jan Sommer. 8 million for the main deal and 1 million as add-on, making it 9 million. But they are saying, no, we don't want. If you want him, cough out more money. But really... Uh, Bayern money, we know they are the giant in German football. So they always know how to buy this player very cheap, and you see how they actually become. So for Manchester Gladbach to say no, they know what they are doing. Yeah, uh, so, Soma is a very, very, uh, he's, he's very, very good keeper. I've seen his game; he's very flexible. Uh, he can fly in from here to he can even fly from here to the gate. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he flies. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but though, that's so, uh, that's just shows it's a, mm. flex, it's a yeah, flexibility, flexibility. Uh, between the uh, between the sticks. Uh, but for the nine million dollars, it's, it's quite poor. Mm. 
it's for, for a player of his caliber yeah, and for the fact a, that he's doing well. A, yeah, I do. I know that the yeah, uh, goalkeepers are not, are not really, uh, not really priced per mm. se, uh, but pricing for nine million is is quite ridiculous. If uh, sort like twenty million pounds, that's that's fair. That would that be fair? After uh, all, after all, Ari, uh, Ari, Ari, Bazala, Ari Zavala guy is earning so much money in Chelsea. Of course, that that's the that's the most expensive uh, goalkeeper right now in the world. Well, mm. we just have to go now. Well, hopefully, young someone will get his pay done there between Bayern Munich and also Borussia Mönchengladbach. Gide Olushola, thank you very much for coming yeah, on the show. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.